Good evening and welcome to the news from Shirok TV. Today's stories include Hamdok postpones cabinet reshuffle until signing of Sudan's peace agreement. Kiir advises Sudanese Revolutionary Front groups to stick to Sudan peace agreement. Minister of Irrigation expected the gradual decrease in the level of flooding. Sudanese Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok has postponed the cabinet reshuffle until the signing of the peace agreement between the government and the Sudanese Revolutionary Front, scheduled for October the 2nd. Last July, Hamdok accepted the resignation of six ministers and fired the health minister. A member of the Central Council of the Forces for Freedom and Change, Ahmed Hadara, told the Sudan Tribune on Tuesday that the Prime Minister informed them that he has postponed the ministerial reshuffle until the signing of the peace agreement. He pointed out that Hamdok is waiting for the nomination of the SRF candidates to the government to reshuffle the cabinet once for all. South Sudanese President Salfa Kiir advised the Sudanese armed groups to stick to the peace agreement and pledged to exert the needed efforts to ensure its implementation. Kiir met with a delegation of the Sudan Revolutionary Front leadership headed by Hadi Idris at the State House on Tuesday to discuss the upcoming final signing of the peace agreement on the 2nd of October. Speaking to Sudan Tribune after the meeting, Idris praised the efforts made by President Kiir to ensure the success of the peace process before, to add that he strongly advised them to stick to the peace accord. Canada has welcomed in a statement issued by the Canadian Foreign Ministry the signature of the peace agreement in Sudan on August the 31st. The statement said that the signature is an initial step towards a comprehensive peace agreement and encourages the remaining groups to engage in a constructive dialogue with the government of Sudan. Canada urged all sides to strive to reach compromises necessary to achieve sustainable peace, indicating that it continues to encourage inclusiveness and the full participation of women and youth in the ongoing peace negotiations. <coughs> The Minister of Irrigation and Water Resources, Professor Yasser Abbas, has expected the gradual decrease in the level of flooding. He explained in a press conference that the heavy rains on the Ethiopian plateau are the main cause of floods, expecting that no floods will occur in Sudan after the completion of the construction of the Ethiopian which will this year by storing water in Aroseris and Marwi Dam, which had a great impact on alleviating the disaster. The irrigation minister has affirmed the safety of dams and reservoirs in Sudan, stressed that all dams in the country work with high efficiency. Following torrential rains and floods in Sudan, the WHO is providing surgical medicines and supplies, cholera medicines and other essential medicines and supplies to affected communities. Supplies have been delivered to ensure water quality and infection prevention and control measures are in place in affected areas, as well as supplies to prevent the spread of vector-borne diseases such as dengue, chiclomania and malaria. Ten environmental officers have been deployed across the country to support national efforts in water, sanitation and vector control efforts. WHO is also supporting ten mobile health clinics in Blue Nile, North Darfur, Red Sea, Kassala and Central Darfur and an additional four clinics will start working in Khartoum in the coming days. The chairman of the Joint Supervisory Committee for Abia Area, Major General Ezzeddin Osman Mohammed Sheikh, received at the headquarters of the Supervisory Committee in Khartoum the United Nations Interim Security Force for ABA new commander, Mr. Kavillo Amdi, in the presence of the leaders of the units of the UNISFAD mission forces. Major General Ezzeddin noted in a press statement that the meeting discussed the security situation, the future and the challenges facing the ABA area after the new leadership of the UNISFAD mission. The chairman of the Joint Supervisory Committee for the Bay Area stated that he provided comprehensive enlightenment on all the incidents and problems facing the area and stressed the importance of building trust between UNISFA and the local community. The chairman of the Transitional Sovereign Council, Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, met in his office the Supreme Council for Sufism in Sudan. In a press statement after the meeting, the representative of the Supreme Council for Sufism in Sudan, Dr. Abdel Mahmoud Sheikh Bilal, said that they discussed with the chairman of TCS the issues that concern citizens about religion and livelihood. 
Member of the Transitional Sovereign Council, Aisha Musa Said, has affirmed keenness on addressing situations and issues of women in North Kurdistan state. This came when she received at her office in the Republican Palace here today a delegation of women of North Kurdistan state. Member of the women delegation, Manal Saleh Ismail, said in a statement following the meeting that they briefed the TSC member on situations and issues of women in North Kurdufan and the efforts being exerted to address these issues. And now we remind you with the headlines. Hamdok postpones cabinet reshuffle until signing of Sudan's peace agreement. Kiir advised the Sudanese Revolutionary Front groups to stick to Sudan peace agreement. Minister of Irrigation expected the gradual decrease in the level of flooding. Well, that was everything for tonight. Thank you for following and see you next week.